I can tell you, Russell, but even before I quit drinking, though, there they were there were a couple of times when when I was working in stores when I I really believed that that what I was standing for was the absolute right thing, right? It was the absolute right thing, and I was I was right, and I was going to stand up for that. And I looked at that as standing up for for my team, um, but. Not that standing up for your team is the wrong thing to do, but you need to do it in the proper way right. because otherwise you get exited, right? And, and then you're not there to stand up for your team, right? So you, you, need, you need to be able to, to, to figure out when the right time to stand up is, when the right time to put your foot down is, and when the time to let something go away um, or go by you is. Um, I, I remember saying to my, my older son one day, years and years and years ago, um, we were talking about, we were talking about someone causing problems. And I, and I said the old adage, right? The squeaky wheel gets the grease. Mm -hmm. And he said, or it gets taken off and replaced with a wheel that doesn't squeak. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh huh. And that, that stuck with me. And I'm like, hey, you're, you're absolutely right. So um, you know, and, and that, that helps you bring in that realization that, that it, it just because you feel that making noise is the right thing to do and is going to, is going to bring attention to what you're trying to make noise about doesn't mean that's the right thing to do. No, it certainly brings attention to you to get the wheel replaced quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I learned a long time ago, it's, uh, uh, being humble and kind is is a tremendous character trait um and sometimes people don't really understand that i've been humbled uh, where i uh, uh and i learned a lot from those moments it was extremely embarrassing to be humbled and called out on something instead of just, just to be humble and to know when it's time to take a stand or not take a stand or uh you know uh, the more i dig in uh the more I realize um, something's going on with me, probably more than the whole situation in itself, particularly when I dig in. Now, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm better today at it. I, I can tend to notice things uh, when they happen um, and just accept things. Acceptance is an important key to my strategy today to let, and loving people where they're at. I don't uh, agree with, uh, you know, everybody, nobody does. But, you know, to not make it a, you know, you got to be really careful when you're talking about politics, religion, or even AI. <laughs> you mm -hmm. got you to gotta be really careful when you're talking about those things. And I know when, when I'm engaging with somebody where there's a, a good exchange, and, the, and then the other, I also know the times when uh, nobody's listening at all. Uh, they're just waiting for the next, for me to pause and take a breath, so, or vice versa, so the person can get their jab. I don't even like those conversations. I mean, those aren't even conversations anyway. Exactly. I don't know how I got off on that, everybody. I apologize. <laughs> uh, Charity, let's pivot. I'm sorry. All right. We'll pivot. We'll pivot to the definition of success. Um, Dave, I think you're a good person to ask this question because you've been in different industries. You've been in different, I don't even think this makes sense, industries inside <laughs> automotive or at least from different perspectives. So how do we redefine what we consider success um is it money is it happiness you know how do we define success yeah i, I think that's a it, it, it's it's a word that um is uh, I'll, I'll go back to a car being personal i think success is a very personal word uh it, it's going to mean a, a myriad of different things depending on on who you are um, and, and even where you are in, in your life at, at uh, a, a certain point, um, you know, I, I've, I've had times where um, I had, I had what I considered success, um, you know, and, and, and that might have been, that might have been making bagels at three o'clock in the morning on a, on a Sunday morning, right? And that was that felt like success to me because I was helping my brother out. Um, you know, so, um, would, would I consider that success right now? No, 
<laughs> right. And thank God he doesn't have that restaurant anymore. Uh, so he won't ask me. That <laughs> really. But um, yes, success is a very personal thing. Um, you know, to some people, it's going to be a lot of money and, and a lot of things. To other people, it's just going to be some happiness, some peace at the at the end of the day or the beginning of the day when you get up. Um, some people, it's going to be having a lot of money because of the things they can do with that money to help other people. Um, you know, it, it, it um, success and money uh, can go together. Um, they don't necessarily have to go together as I'm successful. I have a lot of money. I have four boats, two helicopters. Um, you know, maybe I'm successful and have a lot of money, but I started a, a fund for, you know, uh, youth sports. Uh, maybe maybe uh-huh. I donate a, a ton of my income to cancer research or something like that. Maybe somebody else is perfectly happy having all that stuff and all the boats and they get their friends together uh, on the weekends and they all hang out and that's success to them. And that's what they use their money for. It, it's, um, it, it, it's, not a, it's not a one size fit, fits all uh, word. It's very personal, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Very. And I think, it, I think where people get into trouble is when they let other people define success for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's, yeah, I think that's, that's the, the biggest problem with success, right? Is if, if, if you're going on Instagram to find out what success looks like, then, then you're, you're probably going to have a problem there because now you, you are just letting somebody else define what success is. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, Success, success number one is, is not a, a, a place or a destination, right? And, and, and it's, it's just something that, um, that, that you are constantly evolving to. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to take a moment to say a few words about our new sponsor, WINS. People who love cars love WINS. With over 80 years of experience and innovation, WINS leads the industry with product and system innovations that drive vehicle performance and longevity. WINS leads through our innovation, our technology, and the products we create. We bring a legacy of superior performance that professional service providers trust through our heritage of innovative formulas and unparalleled service. It starts with fuel and oil and it ends with excellence. Our dedication to research and development has led to more than 18,000 granted and pending patents across our company. And that drive continues today at WINS. New vehicle technology like EV requires leading edge service and products. WINS ensures our products meet EV requirements and still provide the same high level of protection that we've always offered. We meet tomorrow's needs by using our knowledge and technology today. WINS brings innovative, technically advanced, professional-grade solutions to the world. Our legacy of innovation and performance is always copied, but never outrun. So thank you, WINS, for sponsoring the What the Fix Stops podcast. Um, You know, I I don't think you're you're ever going to achieve, if you will, success, um, because once you get there, there's still more that, that you're going to want to do. And then what comes after that will, will now feel like success to you, right? Like making bagels was successful to me 20 years ago, however long that was, um, you know, and now it would not be successful. It's the exact same experience that it was 20 years ago, but it wouldn't feel like success to me today. Sure. It evolves. Mm -hmm. I, it is very personal and very different. I think a lot of times, uh, when in this business, when you talk about success, people automatically, a lot of times categorize it with finances, with money. Uh, and I, I know I've, I've been caught up in that trap. That was part of my, my struggles uh, at, at identifying who Russell really was by comparing myself to other people or people said, you can't do that. I tried that. That won't work. I don't struggle with that near like I used to. Uh, and one thing that really bothers me today, I think, uh, and you tell me, uh, uh, when I start comparing myself to other people, uh, or even myself, where I should be, or where I came from, or or what somebody else has or is doing, that I that that I I think that should be for me too. I tend to become unhappy in those moments when I think that, 
And I have to quickly get into my toolbox and realize, Russell, stay in your own lane, run your own race. There's mm -hmm. nobody that can be you and you can't be anybody else. And that I really believe that God has blessed me with something. I, I don't suffer from terminal uniqueness, but I believe we're all born with something that we have to do. And we have to realize who we are and how we contribute to this thing we call humanity uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that elevates and uh, helps other people along the way. Because let's face it, none of us have a damn thing today unless it's not for other people around us, right? We're always making decisions. And I've said this before, my uh, son, dad, dad, you're so successful. You make all the right decisions and this and this and that. And he said, well, how do you make the right decisions? Charity's probably heard this 1,500 times. And Dave, you've probably heard it 1,400 times. But he, he said it's real simple because everything involves other people. So when you're making decisions at the expense of other people, it's not usually the right decision. When you're making decisions and other people benefit and you benefit, it's probably going to be the right decision. It's pretty simple. There's really very basic, simple things that if you apply to your, your life, you can, you can achieve about whatever you want to achieve, I think. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. As, as, as long as the focus is, is not on yourself, uh, that, then you are probably making a, a, the, the right decision uh, or, or at least a decent decision. Yeah. Um, the, um, I just lost my train of thought. I was going to say something to what you just said, and I don't remember what it was. <laughs> well, uh, well, I just, you know, that's a Zig Ziglar thing. Um, you know, help enough other people get what they want. You get you, what you want. I don't know if that gets you back on trap or you're going, Russell, you're taking me down the wormhole. Let's go to another <laughs> question. Uh, oh, I got to tell you something. And you, are, you already know this, but this is for the benefit of everybody else out there listening to. But this woman on here, Charity, she is freaking amazing. I'm just telling you. Uh, the question <laughs> did I just up, predict the future, Russell? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I think I did. I predicted the future. Yeah, you did. And what did <laughs> oh, God. Now I'm lost. Okay. <laughs> okay I'll, take next you, I'll take you okay. back to the past. Okay. Hold on. Take me back to the past. So about that quote, they say, if you help enough people get what they want, you'll get what you want. But there are some people who brag about helping others. Mm. So tell us about the mindset of those types of people. And is it necessarily a bad thing to be bragging about how phil philanthropic you are? So uh, uh, the, the short answer to that is no, uh, if you take out the word brag. <laughs> right to, to to be telling people about about what Float. you've done that that is good to <laughs> to to help other people i i don't i don't see a problem in that if you're doing it to bring something else to light right if if you're if you're talking about the the cancer research that you donated to because you want to bring to light and bring more attention to the fact that that particular area needs more attention and needs more funds or needs more people to volunteer whatever it is then no, absolutely. Talk all day about it. Um, if you're doing it to make yourself feel better and feel good about it, then yeah, that, that's, that's a, a, a problem. Um, you know, being out there to, to help other people um, is, is a, 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 a huge thing. Um, and, and, it, and it's sometimes is difficult to do, right? To, to help somebody without expecting anything in, in return. Um, you know, th th this, th that's, that is not always easy to do. Um, you know, it's usually pretty fulfilling, but I, I think we'd all be lying to ourselves if we didn't do something for someone at some point in our lives and, and think, Hey man, they didn't even say thank you. Right. Yeah. But I I've been guilty. I I'm yeah. guilty. Of that. But, Absolutely. but you can't do something and expect Somebody's no, safe that's energy. just like, you know, the, the biblical stuff, you know, it's better to give than to receive, but you know, when you give, you're going to receive, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, I, I tell you, I have a, 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 a word uh, or a, a phrase that's a pet peeve of mine that just goes all over me. Uh, hey, I did this for you. You owe me a favor. Oh, I'm telling you what, that really, really rubs me the wrong way. Because when I do things for people, I do them not because they owe me. Occasionally, I'll lend people some money, particularly in some of the circles I'm in. You know, they're they're down and out or whatever the case may be. But I'm even selective about that. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, they, oh, I'm going to pay you back on such and such day. And I got to tell you, probably 95% of the time, I don't ever hear from them again. And I certainly don't see any of the money back. But you know what? I don't attach myself to a ball and chain thinking about it either because they don't owe me. I did it to do it. That's what I wanted to do. Waiting for something to come back for me in, in return, uh, particularly mm -hmm. with a date set on it, that's a setup. Right. Yeah. And, and so I remember what I was going to say before. You were talking about See? comparing there you yourself go. to others. <laughs> comparing yourself to others. Um, that that I, I fell into that trap for so, 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 so long um, of always feeling like either somebody had more than me, uh, was better than me in, in some way. Um, I, I had a, a situation where um, a, a service director, where I was a service manager at a store, was leaving to go to a, a different group, um, and they offered me the service director's job, right? And I was saying to myself, I can't do that job. I can't, I can't do his, his job, right? And, and I had worked with this guy at three other stores, right? We had worked and we worked very, very well together. Um, but I allowed that to be, that's what he does. And this is what I do. And I can't do what he does, right? And so I was just comparing what my skill set was to what his, his skill set was. And when you do that, you're, you're, you're diminishing the, the gifts that, that you have, right? right. And, and not allowing yourself the, the chance to, to grow. Um, and, and that comparison, as you said, Russell, this is what, what got me is you said, it, it usually made you feel, I don't think you used the word unhappy, but that's, that's really, that's what it starts to do, right? You start to feel less than or yep. not enough, right? So not worthy. And those are all, you can call it whatever you want to, that self-talk, is horrible okay mm -hmm. the victim instead of victor mentality i'm not worthy i don't count i don't measure up when actually all of us really want is we want to know that we do count we do matter we do make a difference and we are part of something unto ourselves but i'll tell you what that was some self-fulfilling uh, prophecies of me growing up that negative self-talk uh, mm -hmm. uh and you know what it still occurs almost on a daily basis but once again Instead of lingering on and on and on, I, I, I catch it a lot quicker and able right. to turn it around. I just stick on some Aerosmith or something like that and just rock out for a minute. No, I'm, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. be nice to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, now, Dave, I'm going to pivot you again. Um, I hear you talk a lot about the Eisenhower matrix mm -hmm. and, you know, the the X, Y time importance and how to manage that. How can we better manage our time? Well, maybe first you should explain what the Eisenhower matrix is and why it's, why it's relevant. Yeah. So the, the Eisenhower matrix is, is a, a simple um, four squares uh, to determine whether something is, is urgent, not urgent, important, not important. Right? And, and it's a way for you to manage tasks within your day uh, so, so that you are spending your time on the things that are, are important to you to get done, right? It's, it's a tool that you can use. It, it, for, for me, it's most effective in figuring out what you can delegate um, to, to somebody else to do. Um, and, and from delegation, right? You, you get to empower another team member to do something, right? Delegation doesn't mean I'm just tossing something off so that I don't have to do it anymore, right? It's, it's something that I can have somebody else do that if I properly delegate it to them, I properly empower them to do that, that they now have more agency in their day in what they're doing. They now feel more invested in, in the company or the mission that, that we're working on, right? And I have more time to now work on the, the higher level business things that, that, uh, that, that I was hired to do or whoever it is that's utilizing the matrix, what was hired to do. Um, it, it's time management is probably the, the, the biggest misunderstood thing within uh, leadership roles. Um, they, the, far too many leaders spend far too much time on things that 
should have been delegated to somebody else that should have been completely tossed out and gotten rid of out of their lives. Uh, and because of that, they become ineffective in continuing to grow uh, the business in, in having the time to really think about, about problems, right? There's a, there's a reason why people are like, oh my God, that guy had this amazing idea I listened to on a podcast and he said it came to him when he was in the shower. Why is that? Because you're not doing anything. Your mind has time to go within itself and, and kind of rewire some things. And that's when it comes up with stuff. If you're in your day and you haven't delegated any tasks, got deleted tasks that didn't need to be done, and you're just constantly doing something, then your mind never has time to, <laughs> to, to reiterate for new things to come about. Gary, you're raising your hand. You want to elaborate on that? <laughs> Well, I think all of us can relate to that in some form or fashion in a startup, you know. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's it sounds really simple to do, and it's so hard mm -hmm. uh, to do it, especially if you're someone like me who's nitpicky and wants it this way and that way and perfect, you know. <laughs> so I'll tell you, but that's that's what makes you you. Now, charity. Um, so we're we're hiring an assistant for her, okay? Because she needs help. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things she's doing that she could delegate and hand off. The tricky thing is to see, because knowing charity the way I know her, is she going to be able to do that without <laughs> picking that person? Well, but so, so, right. But, but so, so the, the biggest thing there is, is so uh, I'm sure everybody's heard of the, the 80, 20 rule, right? Where, oh, where yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. Well, this is a different 80, 20 rule. So, so what well, you're going to hire an assistant and charity, the way you need to look at it is, is if that assistant can do 80%, right, of, right. of things the way that you were doing it, then that's a win. That's a right. win, right? That, that's, it doesn't have to be 100% the way charity would do it all the time, <laughs> right? Whatever this assistant is, if, if he or she can do it to 80% of how you would do it or what you would do, then that's a win. Yeah, I think I think all leaders can learn something from the the matrix about you know distributing their time a little better. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I certainly have, and I think anybody that continues to evolve and uh, want to be better uh, finds that you know inside that they they don't have to know how to do it all. As a matter of fact, there's there's only really a few things, and I'm grateful that Charity knows for the most part what those things are. Uh, that I do really well beyond that, I don't do really well. And I and some of them I still try to do to some degree. Most of them I let go of because that's not who I am. Yeah, we got mm -hmm. 23 employees. Uh, some of those people, they love doing that. Right. It, it, that Me delegating something to them is like, thank you. I've, I've been waiting for that, you know? Right, and, and, that's, and that's who should be doing it, right? Yes. If, if, charity, if charity made you edit videos. Oh my right? God. <laughs> oh my God. You, you get it done because you're a smart guy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right you, you would you would get it done because you're smart but it would take you hours and hours and you oh. would be frustrated you would be angry right because that's yeah. not what you do that's not no. your zone of genius right no. but it's what charity loves to do yeah right so so that's she's doing what she should be doing and now as you hire an assistant she gets to take some of those tasks that yes she might love to do but she can hand off to somebody else so that you can continue to do other work that you love to do that'll help accelerate the company. Yeah, it's really funny because I'm not hiring her or anybody. She's doing, she's doing it all herself because I, look, she's, she's got to know what to look for, right? Mm -hmm. um, she's, yeah, and I, or Cherry, are you getting close? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> well, first of all, we only started <laughs> like a week or two ago. And man, the pool of applicants is huge. But you'll look at their resume and they'll be like an account coordinator or a data, data, data entry specialist or something. You're like, why are you applying for this position? Mm -hmm. So we have to go weed through a lot of people like that, but um, we're getting closer. Yeah, I, you know, just um, a lot of times I know the people that are coming on the show, probably most of, most of them I know to some degree or another. And but charity does such background stuff. For example, uh, the well, the Eisenhower I've heard you talk about it, but it was refreshing because I'd completely, you know, spaced it out. 
but when talking about being, and I think I may have heard some, but a police officer and a guy that makes bagels, she, she does some digging and she, mm -hmm. see, this is all part of, I think letting people do what they do best. You know, it, it really, it really is. Yeah. We, we wouldn't, I, Charity, no, I do this all the time and maybe she doesn't like it. Maybe from time to time she does, or I do say the same thing about you. I mean, you, you both are phenomenal people and, uh, I just have tremendous love, respect, and and outpouring for the things that that uh, this community of people does, and and how we operate. Look, I, I make mistakes all the time, and I continue to grow and learn. I got five books, one, two, three. I got four books on my desk that that I'll, I'll grab at certain points in the time during the day, and then I get critical. I'll lean back. And I'll pick up a book to read a chapter or something. And, and then I feel like I'm not doing something, but I am doing something, Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, or I have a, uh, you can't see it, but I have this thing. There's probably 50 or 60 where it says, I am a good person. I am this. I am a good husband. I am a good father. Not, I am not, I'm not worthy. <laughs> I mean, but so I have to remind myself of these things just to keep me moving forward every day. And that's what I love about you. Dave, that's, I think everybody loves that you are a servant leader. And there's a difference because you instill, inspire, and motivate people from the inside, not just sometimes with the way you say things, but people watch you the way you do things. Yeah, your approach. People want to learn, you know, yes. mm -hmm. you have a great perspective. And I'll throw out one more question for you before we wrap up. Here. One more question. All right. Tell me if you agree or disagree with this statement, Dave. Thick stops is easy. <laughs> That's, a That's a trick question. That was the top <laughs> of one of my posts the other day. Oh, was it? Did you know that, Charity? Yeah, that's where I got okay. all this stuff. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Dug through his social media. <laughs> um. Yeah. This is, is, so y yes, fixed stops is easy. If, if you're going to approach the, the, the learning, the numbers and things, right. Anybody can do that. Um, anybody can understand the, the numbers. Um, but can you go, can you go deep enough in understanding the people on your team? Uh, that's a, that's a different story. Um, and that's not just fixed stops. That's, that's anywhere and anywhere in life or in any company that you're going to work for. Um, the, the difficulty is not in the, the doing of the job. It's the nuances of doing that job and who you have to do that job with. Um, that, that's where the, the more difficult parts come in is, is actually um, digging in and, and learning your team, understanding your team, uh, and, and being able to help them achieve, achieve whatever vision it is they have for their lives. Um, that, and, you know, even though this is what the fixed ops, and we very briefly talked about the mechanics of being a fixed ops person, but all the things we talked about are more important than, uh, and it just goes, it coincides with what Dave just said. Learning the numbers is one thing. The things we talked about, who you are, your character, your personality, how you treat other people, how you act and react and behave and 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 demonstrate and walk into all these are all these are important critical things for all of you that are up and coming. These are some of the things you all need to be focused on. So, Charity, thank you, Dave, boy, thank you once again. We're humbled that you came on our show today. That's a wrap, everybody. Hey. We're going to be coming. You'll see all these segments. Those of you who follow us know that already, but the ones that don't, you'll be seeing Dave here shortly, along with many other people. You can find us literally all over the place. We are now on TikTok, are we not? We are. Yeah, we're on Tick, 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 Tick. Uh, everybody has their own reasons for that. But uh, this is another successful episode of WTF, and that's what the fix stops. And thank you very much for ParaPal. Thank you, Wins, and everybody that supports, loves us, shares us, likes us, reaches out to us. Thank you very much.